Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I started to do a water change on this 90 gallon and I got inspired to want to share with you some tips about uh, water changes. And I do water changes for a variety of reasons. Uh, I like to give the fish uh, some, some fresh water uh, to swim in. And of course that gives them um, the minerals that are so vital for them. The only way they get minerals really is, is, is through the water, right? That's a, a key source of minerals for the fish. And so you, you, you remineralize the water when you give them a water change. And also, of course, it reduces nitrates. And if you have a tank that runs high in nitrates, if it's heavily stocked and uh, it's producing a lot of waste, or if you're feeding very heavily, you're gonna have uh, high nitrates. No way around it unless you've managed to, uh, uh, to develop a colony of what is called anaerobic bacteria that eats nitrate, that is uh, something we don't see very often in the hobby. For me, water changes are vital. I don't necessarily do the, the big 90% water changes anymore. I watch my, my parameters and my uh, test results. And usually I'm changing water at around 20%, uh, sometimes uh, you know, 15 to, somewhere between probably 15 and 30% max. Uh, unless uh, I, I notice a jump in nitrates, I, I might get inspired to do more than 50%. But uh, I want to share with you some tips on, on uh, and, and some mistakes that people make uh, when doing uh, when doing water changes. And the first tip I'll give you is that uh, do your 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 housekeeping uh, before you do your uh, your water your water change. What do I mean by housekeeping? I mean if you're going to clean if you're going to clean the walls of the tank. Uh, with, with something like this beast, this Rigu Goo beast that I have here. <laughs> if you're going to do uh, some work on the walls, if you're going to do a little bit of light touch up, some vacuuming, uh, maybe uh, maybe scrape down a few rocks, if you could do any of that, uh, do it first. Do it before you pull out the water. Because those things will just, uh, you know, they'll just float around and, and then they'll end up settling back down and continuing to sort of pollute the tank if you do it after you, you've done with the water change. If you do it before the water change, there's a good chance you'll pull a lot of it out, right? And uh, also, if you're cleaning off the plants, sometimes you'll clean algae off the plants, black algae, brown, green algae. And it, it, if, if you do it before the water change, there's a good chance you'll be able to vacuum it up uh, and, or scoop it out with the water change. If you, uh, if, if you do it uh, later, it's just gonna float around the tank, so, so do your housekeeping, do all the housekeeping ahead of time. Now, keep in mind, don't do too much. Don't, um, I don't suggest that you do a, uh, a very big water change and then service filters and uh, do all kinds of stuff all at once because that can, uh, that can shock the fish and you don't want to do that. Maybe create a little bit of an ammonia spike by killing off too much beneficial bacteria. So keep your water changes uh, isolated to just a water change. So on water change day, just change water. But try not to do anything else except a water change. And maybe uh, clean the glass, clean off your plants. Um, in my case, I just turn over the rocks and they look like new. And that's about it. And whenever I do filters, I'll do one filter at a time and I'll do it on a day that is uh, at least a day or two apart from a day where I'll do a water change. Again, I'm trying not to uh, shock the system and uh, bring about a uh, bad result. And uh, these are things I've done in the past. I've made that mistake. And as a matter of fact, with this tank, and it cost me some uh, some very uh, uh, some very nice fish. Watch your heaters. Don't let your your uh, water change get below the level of your heater, or you may have you know, you'll have a problem. Your heater could possibly even uh, blow out, crack, and then you've got all kinds of issues. Uh, one thing you can do is you can lay your heaters on their side. Uh, a lot of them are designed so they can function fine that way. So run them horizontally near the bottom and that way you never have to worry about them. You can leave them on throughout the water change. That's the way I have it in this 55 gallon in front of me. And I have a piece of driftwood in front of it so it kind of disguises it a little bit. So that's one. Uh, one nice thing about the uh, Higer, uh, the larger Higer heaters I've noticed is they do shut off if they notice that the water level has dropped. The outside controller issues a flashing light warning and they shut off inside. So that's I really like to nice. match my, my water temperature within a degree or two. I use a digital thermometer and I just happen to have one. I don't go anywhere without a digital thermometer. <laughs> I have one. 
This one is made by uh, Taylor, Taylor Digital Thermometer, and it gives you a very fast reading on the tank and a fast reading on the uh, on the sink or whatever you know where you're filling it up from. I use the uh, the Python systems, which uh, allow me to fill right from the tap. And when you do that, uh, you you dose the tank for the entire volume of the tank. So in this case, I would dose for 90 gallons. Uh, this is why using uh, something like uh, Seachem Safe is good for your, for your bigger tanks because you use less of it. So instead of two capfuls of Seachem uh, Prime or uh, Fritz Complete, I'll just use a, uh, a third of a quarter teaspoon, just a teeny amount of Safe, and that's plenty to, uh, to dose. I much prefer the Python system. Buckets, uh, the Bucket Brigade was keeping me sore back, so I used to change my water on Sundays. And then whenever I go to work on Monday, I'd be so sore, it was like really hard on my lower back. So I got off of the Bucket Brigade and got uh, got a Python system. Uh, Python, I prefer Python over the Aquion. It uh, just seems to be a little bit more heavy duty, but whatever's working for you, carry on. And because I only run my water down so far, I run, my filters continue to run, whether it's these Marineland filters or an FX6 uh, or, uh, you know, they continue running during the water change. The only thing that I turn off is on the big tanks, on the 210 and on the uh, 300, I'll turn off the sump because uh, the overflow box, uh, what's called the weir, which are those, those teeth on the overflow box that pull in the water, is very high which is a big plus point, which means a lot of water isn't gonna drain into the sump in the event of a power failure. So it's a big positive thing, but it means they have to turn the sump off during a water, a water change because the, uh, the sump will run dry and you could potentially burn out your, uh, your pumps because they'll have no water. Here's my last tip. When you're filling your aquarium, don't do anything else except fill your aquarium. This tip comes from the ask me how I know category. <laughs> you start getting into texts, uh, answering emails, leave the room for just a second, get into a conversation with a family member, you're going to come back to a flooded fish room. So uh, when you're filling tanks, don't do anything except patiently hang around and keep a close eye on the tank and uh, make sure you get it up to the, de up to the desired level. That is my, my, uh, my final uh, hard won uh, bonus tip. <laughs> So uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you like the channel uh, and you feel you're getting something out of it, please be sure to hit that uh, sub button, notification bell, and thumbs up. Let YouTube know something good is going on around here. And I hope to see you on Saturday where we share a lot of great uh, knowledge with uh, just a wonderful group of fish keepers at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's Saturday at 11 o'clock Central. That's noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Hope to see you there. It's a lot of fun runs for about an hour. So those are my tips. If you have some tips about water changes, uh, please go ahead and uh, share them below. We all learn, uh, we all learn from each other around here. much and if you want more information about water changes I'm going to go ahead and uh, share a playlist I'll share it up here somewhere on on water changes and I'll share some of my best key, uh, fish keeping tips uh, down here all right thank you my friends bye bye